Mankind's darkest nightmare is this. But this horror is not the unavoidable fate of a sad and violent species. We are not condemned to act as a divided world, leaving the cry for peace to become but a whimper in the storm. Whether it be international or civil war, racial or religious conflict, we have it within our power now to choose peace. humanity to sit at the table of consultation, viewing our world as the heavens view it, one planet, one people, one unified spirit. Peace will come either as a choice or as a consequence. In either case, universal harmony will be established on Earth. Perhaps you are skeptical. Is continuous human conflict just the way of things? Is an annihilation of life on this planet the inevitable consequence? Even school children are taught world history as a chronological table of war. And current events paint a picture smeared with even more violence, hatred, and seemingly deadlocked opposition. Is world peace really possible? It is more than possible. It is inevitable. It is the next stage in the evolution of this planet. Addressing this fact in October of 1985, a statement entitled, The Promise of World Peace, was released to the peoples of the world, announcing, The great peace towards which people of goodwill throughout the centuries have inclined their hearts, of which seers and poets for countless generations have expressed their vision and for which from age to age the sacred scriptures of mankind have constantly held the promise is now at long last within the reach of the nations. I've been traveling around the world in recent months to such far-off places as India and Thailand, I found that the one topic on everyone's mind is the subject of world peace. This statement of the Universal House of Justice, the promise of world peace, is in my opinion the single most important statement ever made in the history of mankind. It describes how, although we've made great advances around the world, how technology has brought us great inventions to help bring us together again, how various women's groups have come together, how various international groups have come together. 
yet there is sort of a paralysis of will, a sort of ineptness, a sort of impotence to bring about world peace, at least in the minds of most of the members of mankind. And this Universal House of Justice talks about a paralyzing contradiction. You ask everyone, do you want peace? They say, yes, of course. And then you say, do you think peace is possible? And they say, no, it's not possible. People are too violent. People are too aggressive. And yet in this peace message, we are told that this is not right. This is a misunderstanding of the human spirit. For we all know that within each one of us is the power to bring about world peace. The document that we are discussing was issued by the Universal House of Justice, the governing body of the Baha'i Faith. It is a remarkable document dealing with uh, international peace. It was issued in order to coincide with the celebration of the 40th anniversary of the foundation of the United Nations and of the International Year of Peace proclaimed by the United Nations for 1986. The document op opens with some general considerations. There is a prevailing view today in the world that the conflict that uh, we witness, the international conflicts that uh, occur constantly, are a product of the human nature itself. And therefore, there is a pessimistic cast to most of the discussions of the possibility of establishing peace. The Universal House of Justice, in its statement, strikes an optimistic note. It assures mankind that peace can be achieved in two ways. A catastrophic way, peace as a result of, uh, of warfare, peace as a result of compulsion by military force, or peace as a result of the exercise of consultative process, a peace which will preserve the values of civilization and will make the life of mankind so much easier. The statement points out, whatever suffering and turmoil the years immediately ahead may hold, however dark the immediate circumstances, humanity can confront this supreme trial with confidence of its ultimate outcome. Far from signaling the end of civilization, these times will reveal the full measure of man's destiny on earth and the excellence of his reality. What is man's destiny on earth? Let's look back for a moment into mankind's past and see what patterns we can find. In fact, in the infancy of civilization, man discovered and began to implement one of his finest qualities, his natural ability to unify into families, clans, tribes, and eventually cities and city-states. Within these units, we were protected, we flourished, we grew. From this ever-advancing ability to unify, civilization was built, modern nations evolved. And now, with the work of nation-building accomplished, we must prepare the next step towards our common destiny, the building of world civilization. of the force of unity. The creation of the League of Nations succeeded by the United Nations. The rise in recent decades of an unprecedented number of international humanitarian organizations.
the spread of women's and youth movements calling for an end to war. It is our hope, Madam President, that at the end of the UN Decade for Women, we would be talking of a free... Formerly isolated and antagonistic peoples working together in international undertakings in the fields of science, education, and culture. Scientific and technological advances in travel and communication necessary for life in a unified world. Yet problems persist, for mankind's ability to unify and to work together on a global scale, a true spiritual understanding is necessary. One of the reasons that uh, mankind has not been able to achieve international peace in the last century, uh, since first the issue came up for discussions in international bodies, has been the neglecting of the spiritual or, or of the religious component of human nature. Uh, Peace has always been conceived in a rather primitive way as uh, an arrangement, as a series of treaties, rather than as a state of mind and spirit. The Universal House of Justice places emphasis on the fact that the greatest factor in bringing humanity together will be religion. Now, this might surprise some observers, because we have witnessed so much religious strife. We have win witnessed so much religious fanaticism. In fact, fundamentalist religious movements in this century have been frequently the producers of uh, belligerence and enmity between groups of people. And yet, it is the yearning of the human spirit for transcendence that also is productive of an impulse to unity. And here, in this particular message, the Universal House of Justice stresses that religion in its true sense is one of the great forces for the unification of mankind and the establishment of universal peace. The spiritual lesson consistent in all the world's religions that we should treat others as we ourselves would wish to be treated gives moral force to the concept of unity. Without it, national, racial, and even religious groups become narrow and their view becomes distorted into prejudice, fanaticism, selfishness, and superiority. The highest unity is the unity of all humanity. When peace is uh, discussed, frequently emphasis is placed on uh, the banning of weapons. In fact, sometimes a whole movement becomes known as the uh, ban the bomb uh, movement. Unfortunately, banning a particular weapon is not going to bring peace. Uh, people are ingenious enough to discover other weapons, other ways of destroying each other. We must begin with the prerequisites of peace. We must begin with those elements of human organization that will produce an atmosphere in which peace would become possible. Uh, for instance, how is it possible to create a peaceful society when racism is virulent and ruins the lives of millions of people? Therefore, the elimination of racism combating racial prejudice 
is in fact part of the struggle for peace. Or take, for instance, uh, sexism. Is it possible to repress, to keep in subjugation half the human race and then talk about a peaceful world so that, again, the emancipation of women, the granting of equality to women, is a prerequisite of peace? The same applies to the elimination of poverty. If a majority of mankind will be hungry, they certainly will not consent to peace. They will struggle in order to obtain that piece of bread which will sustain their life. The elimination of extremes of poverty and wealth is an indispensable precondition for the creation of a peaceful society. And so in this particular statement, the Universal House of Justice points out that the work for peace, the struggle for peace, has many aspects, has many elements. It is almost like the pursuit of happiness. Happiness cannot be directly pursued, and peace also cannot be directly pursued. A simple signing of a declaration, a simple statement of intentions to create world peace certainly will not bring about a peaceful society, whereas the elimination of prejudice, the creation of, uh, of a society in which men and women are equal, in which racism has been eliminated, in which poverty has been conquered, that will produce conditions for the establishment of universal peace. Guns and bombs are not the only weapons against peace. We can see the disastrous effects of racism, religious animosity, national supremacy, drastic extremes of wealth and poverty. Solutions to these issues not commonly linked to world peace are essential as they are all barriers to unity. and peoples of the earth can no longer endure. The consequences are too terrible to contemplate. Permanent peace among nations is an essential stage. But beyond the initial armistice forced upon the world by the fear of nuclear holocaust, beyond the political peace reluctantly entered into by rival nations, Beyond pragmatic arrangements for security and coexistence, beyond even the many experiments in cooperation which these steps will make possible, lies the crowning goal, the unification of all the peoples of the world in one universal family. It is impossible to create a peaceful society without first cultivating the spirit of oneness of humanity. A humanity divided into fragments, a humanity without a consciousness of its own unity, cannot be a peaceful uh, humanity. Well over a hundred years ago, the founder of the Baha'i faith, Baha'u'llah, invited the then rulers of the world to a great convocation, to a great meeting, at which they would make efforts in order to compose their differences and establish universal peace. Now, this year, the Universal House of Justice has repeated the invitation, has asked the rulers of mankind to convoke a great gathering at which all the problems between nations and among nations will be put on the table in order to take the first gigantic step toward the establishment of world peace. World unity is the goal towards which a harassed humanity is striving. The urge to peace and unity can be seen struggling to express itself. 
the anarchy of our present world order cannot continue. We must recognize that the framework for peace lies in a total change in attitude. A new view of our world as one home for the citizens of the earth. The experience of the Baha'i community may be seen as an example of the enlarging unity necessary for world peace. It is a community of some three to four million people drawn from many nations, cultures, classes, and creeds. Engaged in a wide range of activities serving the spiritual, social, and economic needs of the people of many lands. Though made up of diverse peoples, it has adopted the framework of unity in diversity and exhibits the true qualities of world society. Its adherents accept the vital necessities of the elimination of all forms of prejudice, of the equality of men and women, of the development of a universal language, of the essential oneness of religion, of universal education. All prerequisites for world civilization and world peace. The Baha'i Faith confirms the conviction that all human beings have been created to carry forward an ever-advancing civilization, that to act like the beasts of the field is unworthy of man that the virtues that befit human dignity are trustworthiness, forbearance, mercy, compassion, and loving kindness towards all peoples. The Universal House of Justice is the world governing body of the Baha'i Faith, representing various races, nations, and religious origins. It is a glimpse of the reality of world civilization. The statement of the Universal House of Justice comes to us at one of the most critical stages in our experience on this planet. It has been presented to the heads of state of over 80 nations, including His Excellency Javier Perez de Cuellar, Secretary General of the United Nations, President Ronald Reagan of the United States, General Oscar Humberto Mejia V of Guatemala, President Gianni Zail Singh of India, Former President Dr. Rudolf Kirschläger of Austria. Sir Kingsford de Bella, Governor General of Papua New Guinea. Dr. Patrick J. Hillary, President of the Republic of Ireland. Prince Kuzulwandel of Swaziland. In sum, this message gives us the tools, if we will but accept them, to bring about that great day foretold in all the holy books of God, where we will have peace on earth as it is in heaven. The statement concludes with these inspiring words. Thus we convey to you not only a vision in words, we summon the power of deeds of faith and sacrifice. We convey the anxious plea of our co-religionists everywhere for peace and unity. We join with all who are victims of aggression, all who yearn for an end to conflict and contention, all whose devotion to principles of peace 
and world order promotes the ennobling purposes for which humanity was called into being by an all-loving creator. In the earnestness of our desire to impart to you the fervor of our hope and the depth of our confidence, we cite the emphatic promise of Baha'u'llah. These fruitless strifes, these ruinous wars shall pass away and the most great peace shall come. Thank mm -hmm. you.